Advocates for Climate Action Philippines. So I am from Manila, Philippines. Um, so I'll just talk a bit about the Philippines while we're setting up. Um, so we are from <laughs> Southeast Asia. And, and um, it's an island country and an agricultural country with around 7,600 islands and with around 100 million people. And majority of the people, um, their um, way of living is connected to the land. So fishing or farming and stuff like that. Still not fine. Okay, I'll just keep talking. <laughs> How is everyone? So yes, again, um, from Youth Advocates for Climate Action Philippines, we are an alliance of um, individuals, youth organizations, and student councils that believe in the immediate need for global climate action that is led by the youth but with the different sectors of society. So I'll just go right into it. Um, in this picture you'll see people lining up for water. Um, water resources in the Philippines are in a bad state right now and because of the climate crisis that's happening so we have um, longer droughts, so that's obviously affecting the water. And the stronger storms are also affecting um, pollution. Um, in in like it's polluting the fresh water sources that we have. We have a lot of those, but it's not being managed properly. In 1997 to 1998, we had a particularly bad drought, and the government had to prioritize domestic consumption over um, farm over irrigation of farms. And long term, that led to problems in food security for the country. And talking about this picture and the lack of access of water, um, over 8 million people in the Philippines have no access to clean water as of 2015. As low as 62% have access to regional basic water services, and only 57% of irrigable lands can be irrigated. And in 1997, uh, we were um, one of the first in the world, I think, to privatize water again. So it was privatized before, like long ago, and then it became public, and then, um, yeah, the Philippines privatized water. And that has led to a number of issues, um, overconsumption of water, and, and uh, it's, it, water not being distributed equally to people who actually need it. And it's crazy because water is a basic need, but you have to pay for it. And you can't live without water, but you have to pay for it. So, yes. Um, next, we will talk about the coastal areas and marine resources in the Philippines. Um, the coral reef in the Philippines, the biodiversity is amazing. 75% uh, of all known coral species can be found in the Philippines. And around 35% of the world's coral reefs are in the area of the Philippines. But the reefs are in very poor conditions. Uh, these are, this is a study of, of live coral categories, and you can see how it's just declining year after year. And uh, now there are no coral reefs that are in excellent condition, and most of them are in fair or poor condition. And um, this is partly because of ocean warming. And to talk about mangroves in the Philippines, it, again, we are also very rich in biodiversity in this um, aspect because we have 46 out of 17 known species globally can be found in the Philippines. But again, um, these are pictures of um, mangroves being cut down for aquaculture ponds and, and development projects such as a reclamation site. This, is, this one particularly is in a province in the Philippines where they are cutting down mangroves to reclaim an area, so they're going to put soil in the ocean to make an aerocopolis, like it's an airport city. We don't know why. Um, this is by a private company, not by the government. And to talk, and it's of course displacing a lot of fishing communities. And it's crazy because the Philippines is eighth top producing country worldwide last 2014. 
and we contribute 2.4 percent of total world po uh, production of fish of um, seafood, and we're 11th worldwide in, aqua in aquatic production of fish, crustaceans, and mollusks. But again, our fisher folk are one are the second poorest sector in the Philippines, with 34 percent poverty incidence, and only 2.5 percent of them are employed. And it's it, oh. and to think that we are an island country, so you would think that our fishing community would be thriving because of all the resources that's available, but they're not because of privatization and overfishing and these large companies just getting everything from our fishing community. And for agriculture, this is also, of course, very affected by the climate crisis. Um, in this, this is a graph by IPCC. It just shows that um, the greater warming enhances the risk of widespread yield reduction for major crops. And a major issue of farmers in the Philippines is actually landlessness. So 9.7 million hectares of land are for agricultural purposes, yet 9 out of 10 farmers are landless. Um, only less than one third of landowners control over 80% of agricultural lands. So. Just imagine that a very few people control very large pieces of land. And um, one of the latest issues right now in our country is um, the rice grain or um, unhusked rice. One kilogram of that is only being sold for 0 0.13 US dollars because um, of rice liberalization that is happening in the Philippines where we are importing rice from other countries. And if you can imagine, it's an agricultural country that produces so much rice, but we are importing rice. And, and our farmers can't keep up with the prices of the rice of other countries because in other countries, um, the farming industry, it's industrialized. You have machines, so it's a bit better. But in the Philippines, you literally have to put things down by hand. You like even carabaos, like the animals, that's a luxury to have. And of course, uh, the people who are most affected by storms and the climate crisis are these fisher folk and the farmers and the urban poor. Um, in 2000 to 2003, we had 27 typhoons. In 2004 to 2007, we had 39. And since the late 1990s, it's just been getting stronger and stronger. And um, in 2008, we had 253 natural and human-induced disasters affecting around 8.5 million people. And the next year, that doubled. And to, to talk about the mining industry, sorry, there's a lot of things happening in the Philippines. Um, we are very rich in mineral sources. Uh, we are the fifth most mineralized country in the world. Um, but 93.4% loss of mineral wealth has happened in the past 20 years because of exportation. Because our law allows 100% foreign ownership of mining uh, industries. So none of the mining companies in the Philippines are owned by Filipinos. No. Um, and they say that, oh, it's okay. It, it, they, they make jobs for people. But if you look at the contribution to employment, it's only 0.64%. So that's not a thing either. And, um, the thing with mining, it's also one of the leading causes of um, displacement of indigenous people and deaths of environment defenders. So um, based on Global Witness, a watchdog, an international watchdog, um, in 2018, we became first in the world in terms of slave environmental defenders with 30 deaths. In the last 18 years, there have been 225 deaths in the Philippines. And a total of 144 of those were by military. So it is our own government that is displacing our people, that is killing our people, that is killing our environmental activists. One third of these uh, consists of indigenous people. Half of them are farmers and landless ag 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 agricultural workers. And since 2016, more than 19,000 people have been displaced from, the, from their ancestral lands because of mining. The Philippines is very vulnerable to the climate crisis. Yet we only, it's one of the most vulnerable in the world, yet we only contribute 0.37% to the worldwide greenhouse gas emissions. And a lot of factors affect uh, the community's ability 
to respond and to cope and to recover to the crisis, like such as the high poverty incident and inflation rates and the low wages despite rising um, cost of living and high unemployment. And it, it's really saddening that the Philippines is very, very rich in resources. It's a beautiful country and there's so much that you can see and there's so much that you can, it, it, it's beautiful. But the Filipinos are poor and they are suffering. It's the people that are suffering. But we are not doing nothing about it. Um, we, our, our organization and a bunch of other organizations, progressive groups in our country, we go with the Fisher, with, we, we integrate with, with the basic masses and we learn from them and we exchange stories from them and then we support each other. And this one, this is the, the same site with the mangroves that I, I, I showed earlier. And of course, there's also mobilizations with the different sectors. So these are scientists and environmental activists and indigenous people um, calling out an international, I think based in Australia, a mining company, Oceana Gold. And of course, the recent um, climate strike. Um, and it's not just being called by the youth anymore. It's called. It's being called by unions and indigenous people. And it's just. It's just this thing that we have to work together. And it's not just Filipinos and like all sectors of Filipinos working together. It has to be an international thing. So these are pictures of international solidarity in conferences where it's really now is really the time where we have to band together. We have to. Um, we can't not do anything anymore at this point, and it can't be done by just one country. We can't let things happen, we can't let things go. We have to band together against the global system of greed that is profit-oriented and wasteful, and we have to unite against imperialist plunder. Um, one of the organiz organizations that I've seen do that is the International League of People's Struggle. So here they had global protests um, versus Oceana Gold, and um, a, a symbol of solidarity with the Amazon fire and with West Papua, and it's an, an it's an anti-imperialist uh, organization with chapters all over the world. And I'm personally part of the Commission for Science and Technology for develop for the development of people and the Commission on Environment and Climate Justice. And I think it's just beautiful what they're doing that they're just uniting people from everywhere for a common cause of. Um, anti-imperialism and there's this chat that we do actually that I want to teach everyone here it's um, it goes the people united and then people answer will never be defeated so you think we can try that oh, yeah. the people united will never be defeated I'll say the other one and then you guys go the people united okay so let's try it. the people united will never be defeated Okay, <laughs> you want to try it again? The people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. Okay, thank you. Um, again, we are Youth Advocates for Climate Action Philippines. And if you are interested in knowing more or in joining the International League for People's Struggle, you can just come to me or like contact us here. Thank you so much.